Hello and welcome to this week's Dividend Cafe video and the Advice and Insights podcast. I'm doubling up on purpose because um, the topic I wanted to address in both is the the same this week. So those that are watching, I'm sorry you have to see me. Those that are listening, I have a face made for radio and podcast. So there you go. Uh, you know, this is the 10 year anniversary of uh, the week that changed the world. Um, I'm writing a lot at marketepicurian.com about the um, uh, just kind of day by day breaking out what exactly was taking place 10 years earlier. You have uh, on September 6 that we passed a week ago, the day that the Treasury Department put into conservatorship uh, mortgage giants Fannie Mae and, and Freddie Mac. You have um, uh, probably the day you're watching this video, uh, the 14th of September. It was a Sunday in 2008. It happens to fall into a Friday this year. Uh, the the death and demise and, and in legal terms, bankruptcy of Lehman Brothers, an event that the world is still absorbing. $600 billion of assets. Um, at one point, a $40, $45 billion market capitalization, uh, unfathomable amounts of uh, value deterioration um, and, and broken uh, debt and, and uh, of course, worthless equity. Um, that event was not the cause of the financial crisis, um, but that event is permanently and understandably and, and accurately affiliated with the, the events that we now call the financial crisis. Um, the, the fact of the matter is that the Lehman Brothers bankruptcy was caused by the financial crisis. It wasn't the cause of the financial crisis. You see what I did there? It's very intentional. Um, there was a housing bubble. There was a credit bubble. There was a buildup of excessive leverage in the financial system. Um, there was a uh, uh, willingness to believe in the impossible. Um, there was greed uh, run amok on Main Street and Wall Street. Uh, there was incompetence about the role of derivatives in a complicated uh, uh, multi-party counterparty system. And there was uh, excessive amounts of faith that that counterparty system would hold um, and and the complexity of swaps and derivatives um, was too much for the financial system to bear and it brought down Lehman Brothers. Now I just said a mouthful, I don't know if that was 30 or 60 seconds, but I can say it in one sentence. Um, very, very bad investments were made and those bad investments had to be purged and in doing it, it wiped out the equity of the great house of Lehman and with it, some incredibly talented people that were not a part of the decisions that were made. And then from that, um, the, the understandable question was, what's coming next? Because Lehman was not the only company over levered. We'd already seen Bear Stearns go down um, six months earlier in 2008. Another Wall Street titan um, that had levered themselves up roughly 40 to 1. And, and so uh, Merrill Lynch then became the, the firm that was still sitting on excessive amounts of what are called collateralized debt obligations in their balance sheet. They were holding them themselves. They had made them with the purpose of distributing them, but they were keeping an awful lot in their balance sheet, sometimes voluntarily, sometimes not voluntarily. But these things did, began deteriorating as the underlying mortgages proved to be um, not what people had anticipated. And so you had a massive hole of capital um, at Merrill. And when the, uh, the market continues to fund you, um, you can kind of get away with it to some degree. But when that confidence goes away, um, it becomes a death spiral. Merrill got in front of it by uh, finding a partner who could take on their um, capital obligations because they had a huge deposit base and that was Bank of America. And uh, they ended up transacting over the weekend when Lehman was going bankrupt uh, to, to close Monday morning and, and announced that um, Merrill Lynch was being taken out uh, by Bank of America at a 70% premium to what the stock had been at the weekend before. 
Uh, Bank of America went down 21% on the news, and Merrill Lynch actually went up. And that was um, on a day that the market was down 500 points, 4.5% back then, because the denominator was an awful lot lower than it is now. And that was the worst day in the year, uh, the stock market at that time. It would get worse later. So um, then you had AIG get bailed out on Tuesday. And um, the $85 billion the Fed put in gave them a right to 80% of the equity of the company. And uh, AIG needed to be liquefied because their counterparty risk as the underwriter of a lot of these bond insurance contracts um, had, was just astronomical. And at that point, the Fed and Treasury were in a full-blown panic about what it would mean the contagion risk just systemically to our financial system's health if all these other financial organizations that were relying on AIG's ability to make good on their payments if they were allowed to, to blow up. So AIG had to be made whole. and uh, But then, of course, more Wall Street firms were called into question including my former home at Morgan Stanley. And uh, and that was on Wednesday, September 17th. And I have an article about that day. And actually each day I just went through, I have a different article that you'll find at marketepicurean.com that I wrote this week. And we're releasing them just day by day. Short little articles, I think readable. I don't know if you'll find them interesting or not, but they're interesting to write. Uh, those were extraordinary days. And, and I don't have a significant investment lesson to give you about this right now because I'm going to go through these couple weeks of, of memorializing those days and moments. Um, by the way, just in terms of the normal investment commentary that we do at Dividend Cafe every week, DividendCafe.com has a totally normal market commentary this week covering a whole lot of, a lot of topics. Uh, but but the bottom line is that they, um, uh, the, the financial crisis of 2008 has an extraordinary amount of uh, teaching lesson embedded in it for us today. And I want to unpack all that in the weeks ahead and, and, and not only look back at what was, but I want to continue discussing the reality of leveraged finance, the reality of confidence-based systems. Um, the defensive measures people can and should take in their portfolio, their perspective as investors, um, the role that greed and speculation and leverage play, um, the deterioration of value that always comes as a surprise to those who took the greed side of things, the leverage, the risk, the speculation. And I'm going to talk about um, behaviorally the the things that uh that an investor has to do and did and that we learned out of the 2008 saga um that were generational lessons and in some people's cases they're not really lessons for the future they, they were they were things that mattered right then and there that could make or break their financial security think about that there were people that their decisions that they made in the aftermath of that financial crisis that those decisions broke them financially and there were people who made decisions that made them financially, that enhanced them, that protected them, that that um, helped to, 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 what's the word I'm looking for? Fortify their financial position in a period of incredible vulnerability and weakness. So that I, I really hope that this treatment of the topic, the, I'm going to come to you again in a couple more videos and we're going to do more podcasts. Um, at the end of this little series of writing at marketepicurean.com, I'm going to do a real big uh, article, uh, excuse me, podcast at Advice and Insights, just kind of laying out a full summary of things. And obviously, I'll do the video as well for those of you watching the video. But um, I don't think the lighting is real good on this video right now. So I'm going to apologize for that in advance. But th I'm in my New York office. And when I don't have my my studio and my my people that set all this stuff up for me, then this is what you get. Uh, so I apologize, but listen, um, thank you for listening through this whole screed and, and reach out with any questions and comments you have, but it is not something I would say happy anniversary about. This was the, a painful memory, but it was a time that, uh, first of all, it changed the world. It changed capital markets forever. It changed Wall Street forever. It changed my life. It changed my career. Um, and, and we are able to sit here today 
uh, with with an incredible victory that has come out of this financial crisis as investors um, that 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 uh, I want to kind of explain what I mean by that in the weeks to come. I hope that's uh, enough to whet your appetite. Thanks for listening to Advice and Insights. Do go to Dividend Cafe podcast and DividendCafe.com for this week's market commentary. We're talking about trade, talking about the Fed, all the normal things we have to talk about. And thank you for watching this video. And I will see you next week back in Newport Beach.